so today we're going to be making a brass hammered ring. Um, I love seeing how things are made, so I thought it'd be fun to show you guys how I make my rings. So stay tuned, keep watching, and find out how your rings make. Okay, so first things first is you have your brass sheet. They come in different gauges, which are thicknesses. Um, I like to use 24 gauge for rings and 22 gauge for bracelets just because uh, 22 gauge is a little bit stronger for bracelets. So, got our steel sheet. Next we need to know for a ring how big it's gonna be. Uh, I like to change it into millimeters. So, um, we're gonna be making a four and a half. You can go to any online uh, site to find a converter to get sizes in millimeters uh, for the circumference of a, of a ring. Um, I did that already. So, four and a half is about 47.8 millimeters. And so, um, knowing that, first I'm going to cut the slice of brass that will become the ring. Uh, they're about a quarter inch thick. So I measure a quarter inch here and here um, with a nice straight ruler and a pencil because it gets a finer line. And then I cut it with straight tin snips. Tin snips come um, three types that I know of. Left to make a left hand curve, right to make a right hand curve, and then straight to cut straight. And I do that because tins are pretty, and any kind of milk can be cut, tough to cut, and so um, thus you need the right snip. So these came from, I believe, Harbor Freight. A lot of my tools come from Harbor Freight just because it's more economical. They don't have to be name brands to be good, um, and that's what I found. I've already cut the piece. Here it is. When you cut it, it might kind of curl up. I just take my rubber block and steel block, which came from Michael's. Um, you can find them anywhere online, but I find mine at Michael's. Just use the coupon to get a, a discount. But anyway, um, I have the steel sheet. Take a, a rawhide mallet. This is about, a, I think, a one inch or a three quarter inch rawhide mallet, also from the internet. And you just hammer it to make it straight. Okay, so we've got a straight piece of brass, about a quarter inch thick. Now we're going to cut it to the length of the ring that we're making. So. I said 47.8 would be a four and a half. Now considering the ring, let me just show you, um, we're making it kind of adjustable. So one, it's not closed in the back. And then two, it's rounded. So you're not gonna need the full 47 and, and an eighth, or um, 0.8 because that would be for a ring that's closed and soldered closed and it's just like a regular band. We're not doing that. So with that in mind, I'm probably gonna make the ring about 47 millimeters and that should get us to where we need to be. So um, placing it on the ruler for, that's a half, so bring it out that. This doesn't need to be too precise. Um, another thing to know is that anytime you hammer something, it always extends uh, or makes the piece of metal longer because you're you're kind of condensing um, the metal and that kind of spreads it out. You're making it thinner and that makes it spread. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Okay, next is the tricky part of this whole ordeal, well, project, I don't say ordeal, ordeal sounds like this, is uh, this part is the hammering of the actual impression. Um, the more detail a stamp has, the harder it is to get a good detail. Um, from the stamp, and which is the case with these these stamps. So I'll do a couple test test wax. That's pretty good, just to make sure I'm holding the stamp properly, and you know, gonna break yourself in. Okay, so where am I? We are gonna find the center of this piece of metal so that we know the stamping is going in the center. Um, four and a half, so we need two and a quarter, which is right there. Okay, that's the center. Now we, we hope that this goes well. Otherwise you gotta cut a new piece. This one goes to waste. Lovely. That was a good job, that was a good one. Okay, then I take a Sharpie just to make sure I got a good impression. Steel wool, uh, fine steel wool. You find this at Lowe's, Home Depot. Doesn't need to be fancy. And that just rubs off any of the excess 
to give you a nice little impression. Okay, so next thing is that we want to make the edges rounded. Um, it's safer to wear and it's just overall more attractive. So I'll meet you over at the grinder. Okay, so this grinder, um, also from Harbor Freight, gift from my husband for Christmas, um, is something I never thought I'd actually need, but it's great to have, especially um, with this item that I make. So um, first things first, make sure you wear goggles. I'm not huge into safety, I'm not, sounds bad, but I'm just not. I um, don't usually wear goggles, but there you'll get shards of stuff flying at you, and that's not good for your eyes. So um, let's turn this baby on. And then with a rolling motion, you just kind of roll it. just to make a nice rounded edge. You could do this with a regular file, but it would just take forever. So, you know, use what you have. This grinder wasn't very expensive either, so you know, you won't like the break the bank if you go get one. Harbor Freight's online, so if you don't have one near you. Okay. So now we've got nice rounded edges and we're we'll back to the workbench to show you what I do next. Okay, so as I said before, you don't need the grinder. It's not a necessary item. You can get a set of files also from Harbor Freight. I promise I'm not, um, I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I just really like them. So um, you can get a set of these. I think these were like nine or ten dollars and I got four. And so all you do is on the push stroke, uh, another good tip. Files work on the push strokes rather than sawing back and forth, which will dull the file and really not get you anywhere um, closer to, you know, finishing. Uh, just do it on the push stroke and use this to kind of round out any of the edges that aren't, didn't get perfectly rounded from the grinder. The grinder kind of does the heavy lifting and this is, this is the iron that comes in and really starts to clean stuff up, make it look presentable, sellable. Um, just overall polished looking. We're going to throw this in a rock tumbler later, um, which I probably won't show in the video just because it's not rocket science, but um, rock tumbler, a pound of steel shot that I got on eBay, which is the cheapest I found, and then a, like a drop of um, dish soap. Not the type that you put in the dishwasher, but the type that you use to wash the dishes before they go in. And then you kind of tumble that for like an hour, maybe a couple hours, three hours, and it'll really get these edges nice and clean. Okay, I think we're done watching filing. Um, I usually just go over with steel wool just to get as much of the rough edges off the metal. This is actually pretty good. Next, we have the ring mandrel, um, steel. This I got from Fire Mountain okay. Gems. So I wrapped it around the ring mandrel and now I'm going to take the hammer and hammer down these edges. Make them round. And squeeze them in. Hammer them down. Okay, so those are hammered down. Now I take ball peen hammer. Um, ball peen hammer is just basically this part is round. And you just kind of tap it. And go all the way around. Now one thing to know is that because the mandrel's graduated, if you don't do this and flip the ring over, your ring's gonna be graduated and weird, so you don't want that. And then also, don't worry about kind of tapping over the um, the does the stamp, because it's like way it's way deeper than any of these divots that this is making, so it won't upset. I mean, don't like really go at it, but you don't have to do anything different than you've been doing. Okay, so I've gone all the way around now, and I'm just. Checking if there are any spots that I miss with the hammer. Okay, 
Okay, it looks good. What we do now is the sizing part. So we are making a four and a half. So I'll slide the ring up to like a three and a half or a three so that I can almost close it. And then I'll take the rubber hide mallet. And I'm hammering the opening on the end here. And then I'm also going around the ring. Flip it. Don't forget to flip it. You'll feel if it's not exactly round anyway. Okay. Now that size, it looks good. It looks like a four and a half to me. Looks good. Now we go here, we make sure the ends are lining up the way they should be. And move it down. Okay, so it looks good. Just like this is finished. 